I have to give uploads to ecosystem restoration camps that uh, in this, it is standing still with us as camp human nature in development of tools that we can use in the training the young generation in schools, in institutions like vocational institutions, we have the really young and those tools have been placed. Elliot Connor, the founder of Human Nature Projects International was the first to give me a tool for training young people and communities. That was a way back when we just started almost. And ecosystem restoration camps has done the same. And now for me to implement, I am on ground and I have to assure everyone who is listening to me and seeing me. I am destined to giving my effort, my life, to have the a sustained mother earth. My efforts shall continue, not only in Uganda, not only East Africa, not only Africa, but globally, with any means that I might be in position to give my hand, my, my skills, and my all. The second is to promote the clean energy to reduce on deforestation through campaigns and advocacy work. This has been implemented. We are underway. The, long, the, the journey is extremely longer because we can't see exactly where we are going, but we know the route. And we know it is the right route. It is far. We have staged several campaigns. We have mobilized the people community leaders, because we stand on the pillar of inclusive community participation. The local leaders, the cultural leaders, the religious leaders have been reached in all angles, especially in Uganda. We have written to them, we have called them, we have summoned them. The members of parliament, for the same cause, to, over, to overcome the global pandemic of climate change, to restore the ecosystems in place. The challenge of the soil degradation, swamp reclamation, and mention it, threatening of the endangered species. We are conserving wildlife in the same camp, and that is the chimpanzee. Why would we do this? Nature is nature. Over 750 hectares of land that we are destined to restore, that has been asked of us by the National Forest Authority of Uganda, who is our collaborator, partner, in contributing to the same efforts. This land is under threat too, especially the natural resources within it that are on it, the forest resource and the wildlife. The place is very rich with Wildlife, for sure it is highly endowed. We have the albino chimpanzees. That is quite very rare, especially in Africa. But there's fascinating attitudes of the chimps. Brings about our zeal to conserve. We follow the rules where they came from because there is another 
forest reserve, which was depleted completely. And so they migrated from there to this forest reserve. A few that survived to be killed. And so for us, our efforts, in addition to what Uganda Wildlife Authority and the other actors in conserving wildlife are doing, our efforts are saying also no to endangering wildlife. The same applies to how they depleted the other forest resource. We are saying no, the time is now. A better tomorrow is made today. We are now awake and we have taken the first step of implementing that. What is there should be conserved? And what is not there needed to be put back? We have various activities that are really taking place, including creating awareness, which is one of our objectives in the communities, in the schools, about human wildlife conflicts, coexistence between humans and wildlife, and how the resources can be shared in an equitable and sustainable. How does this take root? Well, the generation that is doing that might have been quite not aware. But then, here we came up with a, an idea that we are able to let the new generation and that one which is still there to understand with information dissemination, by training and sensitizing them. This has been effective and we are effecting it with the help of the local leaders who help us in the mobilization of the people in various angles, villages, and those that are educated in the same sector to help us disseminate the information. So many people on the ground, they have not been knowing the importance of coexist, living together with the world life. But we have seen so many things happen in this world, where the zones that have a lot of chimpanzees the communities have gardens which go to the extremities of the natural resource, that's the forest resource. However much we have an issue regarding the boundary making by the authorities, there are no clear boundaries between community land and wildlife, wildlife habitats. But that's the, that one does not bring about humans to inconvenience the world. We have found scenarios where in such areas where there's wildlife and people are happily living with the wildlife, they don't inconvenience their gardens. Completely, they don't, they move smartly, they move around, they play around. People enjoy looking at them because they are half humans. That's what they call them, that half humans. They do what a human can do. It is to a surprise that some community managed to inconvenience by threatening to capture a baby chimpanzee. So they captured it and took it to their home community. In the very evening, a male chimpanzee with a female attacked one baby human being, and so was taken to the bush. Then,
since we have one man asked the family that inconvenience to take back the baby chimpanzee to the forest the following day. They took the baby chimpanzee to the forest. And after two hours and something, the baby human being also came back. I think there is some relationship between humans and wildlife that we need to maintain. As Camp Human Nature started in 2020, we started all this work of conserving wildlife in Ikakumiro, within the western part of Uganda. And I have to let you know that the efforts we are trying to add to other actors, including the government of the Republic of Uganda, in the restoring ecosystem and conserving Mother Earth with its end of nature. There are more 700 freely given to human nature to conserve, to restore. They give proper smart practices that the communities should use. Up to now, we have seen that the people in the local communities are still like And that's why our sensitization efforts shall not immediately come to cease, but will need more hand. Of course, camp, the camp covers an area of 540 hectares. That is the land that we have in Tokyo. But that is without now the community land. The community has given its, uh, its support by accepting to restore together with human nature. The area has, of course, modern savanna climate, which is very good for agriculture. Settlement. There is one life that needs to thrive. And we have two rainfall regimes. We call it seasons in a year. And that means this rainfall season starts from March to June and then August to December. And those are high peak months for a lot of activities. We don't misuse those, that time period. Once we are set, once we have organized ourselves in the house, it is a busy time. Nevertheless, due to being a very good area for agriculture, settlement has come in as a threat. Increased agricultural land use has threatened the natural resource and which is at the same time a habitat for wildlife. It is so much inconveniencing and disturbing to listen on the both side of the parties. The local community argues that they need to have more food to sustain themselves. And they have nowhere to go and add themselves land, apart from inconveniencing themselves on the forest resource, which is the habitat for wildlife. It becomes a conflict. Either you leave the community to encroach on the forest resource, destroy all the tree species that we have been, that had been left by our grandpeople, grandfathers and mothers. 
where are they used to get the medicine? Source of medicine. So that agriculture can take over due to wrong practices of agriculture. But we have said no. The answer is listen to the voice from human nature. With all other actors that it is coming to, to you with, to sustainably use smart practices. Use the small land you have and produce bigger. Stop use of herbicides, they are destroying the land. The fertility has been decreased drastically every time and every day because of the wrong practices. We are part of those who are championing the change by explaining this to all people of various categories, right from the young, who are succeeding those who are facing out in schools and in communities, the dropouts, the teen mothers, because there are many. Human nature stands on a number of values. That includes honesty. We stand on being honest, not to ourselves, but before the community and the environment. If we are not honest with the environment, with its and old nature, then tomorrow is not good for me and you who is seeing me today. We need to have good integrity every time and the transparency takes lead. Of course, hard working is our motto. Every day we have to say it before we move out of that. And lastly, we are focused and destined to pursuing our goal, our vision, and our mission. As I said, the journey is longer. We have a number of activities which includes the greening schools activity. Here, we have various schools where we are giving our support in letting them know where they will be in the next, in the nearby future, in the next few years. After when they are seeing that the trees that have been feeding them, I am talking about the fruit trees, like the mangoes, they have been cut because of the desire to have quick earning to survive for an hour. You destroy a tree that feeds the future. So this young generation that you're seeing there, I am there, I am telling them, and they all were lifting up trees because it is the way to go. They have to plant for themselves. In the case the current generation destroys what is there, let the younger generation put what will serve them and serve others to come. A better tomorrow starts today and now. We are on the fight of regreening, where seems to be desertification, deserted, degraded, deforested, and where there is need. Everywhere there is need. In a case there is nobody. Community nurseries is one of our activities. The projects we are doing, we need to have highly equipped nurseries that have 
enough siblings. In our store, we should have enough seed species. We take some time to go into the wild, the forest, to look for seeds. Seed collection is one of the key activities, and it is very powerful. Not easy, but so enjoyable. Enjoyable when you go with the heart of making it. We collect the seeds from the wilderness. Sometimes when we are pushed to the extreme and we have nothing, we buy the seeds and they are sold expensive. Sometimes and most of the time, we are not able to buy. And sometimes we are able to collaborate, to, to share with our partners who are having the same goal so that we fulfill our targets in every year, every season. We set forth proper work plan for the next five years. We must reach you know, five million trees to be planted in the next 10 years. Five million trees as human nature in the next 10 years. But we started on it already, the 10. So we, we are remaining with about seven years. And I, be, I believe we are there. Another, we do livelihood improvement. In a bite to promote a health and sustainable coexistence between communities and environment. Yes, human nature project is embarking on promoting the three species that directly address the needs of the communities. Because not every tree is helping in the communities. But we are trying to incorporate, to, a, to bring about what can bridge the gap. It is helping the communities in several ways. By planting multi-purpose crop trees, crop trees. And this includes the cashew nut trees, high value crop trees, coffee, but integrated with agroforestry trees. Some people, uh, they think they have small land portions, maybe, but this has been still revised on, by planting on the boundaries of their land with the neighbors and sparsely populating trees. Besides that, we encourage and we are campaigning for fruit tree growing in communities in the same way by sparsely planting them so that every household has fruit trees, has agroforestry trees, have at least a medicinal tree, helping them not to over inconvenience the forest trees. The forest trees, the habitat for wildlife. There will be no sights and sound if at all we don't wake up today, if at all we don't raise our voices today, if at all we do not combine our efforts together, national and globally. Tomorrow might be more difficult for several others. And we have looked at the community being in the cold of livestock. I have to tell my dear colleagues who are here with me today that the community being a livestock center corridor, we are encouraging the fodder trees, which are good for domestic animals. And they are planting those for the trees. They provide shade for animals and people. 
and the leaves are good food for the animals and it is the very medicine for animals. Some of these trees still are good food for some wildlife. The use of the fodder trees as food source for dairy cows increased production and several people are earning out of it heavily. The goats, the cows, the sheep, some people are now into pigs, rabbits. These are all enterprises that help them advance, try to, to advance them in the cheapest and easiest way. Of course, when the animals are fed by fodder trees, fodder wood, the production is always increased between 25 to 60%. And here, one liter of dairy goat is milk and the farmer about one and a half dollar. That means he's able to sustain a little bit himself with one liter of milk, God's milk. In addition to that, there is of course increased meat production. Other than inconveniencing the wildlife, bush meat, which has been the order of the day in the recent past. I call them now reformed the poachers. They have left the activity of poaching slowly by slowly. And they are our principal navigators within the forest as we are looking for seeds and good target areas to get footages for wildlife. My reformed poachers, they are good and they will help many of my colleagues who are here and those who, are, who will see us later to come and check on camp human nature. Besides that, a little bit in the, about the organic farming, uh, the community has accepted the introduction of organic farming using organic products, materials in agriculture. It is very important because it is sustaining the land use, maintaining the fertility and increasing fertility. And also leading to the production of the guinea products without inconveniencing soil and other living organisms in place. By introducing and educating people on safe modern farming practices, and this has to be replicated. We have not stopped now at Camp Human Nature, we have several other places we are replicating this. Using organic materials. Next. We have not only planted trees for crops, for, fr for fruits only, neither for fodder, but also we have implemented planting of some trees that quickly grow for firewood. So that's still our mothers, our sisters, the women do not go immediately to fetch fire from the forest by cutting down the trees. And also not for our brothers, our fathers and uncles not to cut down trees for chapel to add money. And therefore we have introduced together with our local energy saving stocks. For women, especially because they are the people locally here who also go into the kitchen to cook food. As men are looking for how they will live healthy and looking for the source to bring home for them to cook.
So, a little bit about the, uh, just a little bit, uh, Ingi, the previous slide. Oh, sorry, Ronald. I, uh, okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, our partner at the Chimpanzee Conservation Association, that is Kairawa, together with us, we promote the use of fuel efficient cookstops. They decrease consumption by 60%. And we are aiming to save about 10,000 tons of wood as well as saving over 100,000 tons of carbon dioxide by distributing up to 100,000 energy saving stocks. There is need to support this because it is one of the key players in leading to deforestation. It will reduce only wood usage by 80% per household. And in addition, of course, about 60% estimated will be a reduction in incidences of respiratory diseases among the women, children, and all other people in the community. So contributing to healthy living. Community recipients of fuel efficient stores also receive a minimum of 100 tree seedlings to plant on their farms because it is contributing to each and every one. That's why we are implementing the energy saving stores as one of the activities that we have at Camp Human Nature and a human nature. Next. Of course, there is vegetable growing. This just came in of recent. It started last year in, uh, I think, September, whereby there, were, there has been a lot of now teenage mothers and they have nothing to do. Quickly we plan for what could really help these young people who are having other younger ones that they are caring and trying to cater for. So through community gatherings and with the help of the local leaders, who help us in mobilization of the teen mothers especially and the youth have been more so fully engaged in a, in the sustaining implementing vegetable growing. It helps them to earn money almost a month. We try to find to source for the good seeds for the particular type of vegetables. This has also not only been in the rural areas, but also in the semi urban. And it has really resulted into good yields because many of them have appreciated and they will continue appreciating because our struggle, our aim must come to be achieved. And this will only be when we are together when there is acceptance, when there is zeal. The youth who are highly unemployed have now taken on such opportunities also 
to go into vegetable growing. It keeps them busy and quite focused. Next. Next. Yes, the clean and safe water harvesting. Of Mono? course, this. Sorry, I um considering the time, uh, it's it's already six. Um, maybe you can um close it off in in two or five minutes, so people still have some space to ask you questions as well. It's well. I have no objection. Uh, though I was just summarizing up with clean self and a way of harvesting water, how we are helping the communities to harvest both groundwater and from the trees. It is very key and very important. Water from trees, is harvested in the ports, local ports and small jet cans. And then the groundwater help, helping them to make bricks and also store or keep some water for their use in their daily lives. Maybe you can go the next time wrap up the last one. Yes, the chimpanzee wildlife conservation, of course, that one I talked about it. Of course, it has been much more so affected by the ignorance of so many people when they are not aware and they need a lot of uh, sensitization and training. We need to put efforts in planting trees. We need to have an organized and more concentrated team to support this team. Next. Of course, the forest gardening in schools is very key and very important. Whereby all schools that are in our reach, we established, we established forest within the small gardens, their compounds, but in those forests have quite a lot of different species. Though most of the paramount or important species that are medicinal and with various importances have been depleted, they have been threatened and everything. But of course, even in the communities, we have encouraged at least to have a forest which gathers quite a lot of species in a small cell. In our 11 cells that we are operating, at least every cell, we have a forest that we are establishing. Next. Yes, we have, of course, key challenges that the interspecies real pose. And this, these are not limited to human wildlife conflict. It is very broad. I will not go into details, but I will briefly say as they are. Environmental degradation, the habitat loss, First wildlife migration, wildlife trade, the inclination in policy and law implementation. Of course, the threat to indigenous species, desertification and famine, of course, which results into death and population reduction. Those are very, very challenging challenges that each of us should look read, understand, think, and act so that tomorrow we can have a better living. What affects me here locally today, tomorrow it will affect John where he is right now. Next. Of course, we have tried as human nature find solutions through tree planting culture, the political will and career leadership in restoration of the mother earth. That is the collective will that ecosystem restoration camp has decided to give the arm, the upper arm, the right hand arm to human nature and several other camps globally to overcome such challenges. Training and education, of course, that we are doing and that we need more. Support, efforts, 
her and to join the efforts in the same. Collaboration and partnership with like-minded key players in restoration is very important. Of course, monitoring, research, campaigns and possible advocacy for natural resources and human life. They are very prime. We need to put them at forefront if we are to live a better tomorrow. Local community inclusive participation in restoration activities must be number one. This helps them to adopt and maintain the sustainability of what we intend to implement. The government and non-government agencies support for mother earth sustainability for the future is very, very key as a solution to the above challenges. Next, as we summarize up. Of course, our key partners are human nature projects, uh, who of which I really give my applause to the National Forest Authority, ecosystem restoration camps. Locally, the Kairawa Keepers Conservancy, Trees for the Future Uganda, Youth Empowerment Initiatives and then Tourism that they can take. And other individuals, I give my really great and sincere thanks for that very giving hand at heart in supporting restoration activities. I have to thank you so much. I have to say, I think the last slide would be my only name, Ronald Kawoye, as I remain, and the camp manager, the camp human nature, and the national director of human nature projects Uganda. I am so grateful and so humble for all of your attendance and listening to me. God bless you and I thank you. And I welcome any suggestion and possible efforts to add together, to overcome together. Thank you and thank you so much. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you so much. It's incredible what you are all doing. And it's so important that you're focusing so much on education and empowering the local community. Um, yeah, I think everyone is very interested about your project. Are there any questions for, for Ronald? Just to clarify, Ronald did tell a lot, but maybe there are questions. If not, I do have a, I do, I, are there, oh, fair, pretty earnest? Sorry, you are muted, but, yes, you are muted, but. I'm muted, of course, I forgot to put on the microphone. Hello, hello. Yes, Ronald, I have a question. Um, the things you do seem uh, to happen uh, over a big, big surface. And how do you go to the communities? Do you have uh, counselors? Do you have people who are instructed and go around to spread the message, to instruct people? To How does it work? Thank you, Ernest. I will ask straight. I don't know. Uh, maybe Inge, you wanted to say something? Well, I suppose that I, I understood the, the area in which you operate with your camp activities and your your goals is quite big. Um, you instruct people, I understood, to do sustainable agriculture and all you explained to us. How does it work? Do you have people who go to the communities or do the communities come to you? Do they have to move to your place? How does it work? Uh, I have to let you know that one, in our agenda of inclusive community participation, inclusive community participation, we bring on board, we bring on board community leaders, first of all, political leaders, cultural leaders, religious leaders, the youth leaders, and the women leaders. We call them and they understand our concept and we work very closely. 
they do big in mobilize helping us our team in the mobilization of the community as we are disseminating the information we first disseminate to the local leaders it is very prime and very key and that's how we manage to penetrate in any area that we intend okay thank you thank you Thank you, Ronald. I think that is really uh, powerful and and uh, for many camps an interesting way to connect with the local community. Uh, Peter, you have a question? Yeah, I do, because so much of what your presentation uh, described is, is how you are looking for what I would call nature-based solutions, which is the hot and happening term right now in the world, but basically teaching people how nature can provide um, and then there is the, 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 the work to uh, reconcile the wildlife that's, and, and human in interaction, the chimpanzees especially, and, and how people can, can change their relationship. How is your experience with people um, and their openness to see themselves as part of nature and involved with nature and that nature is, is, is plentiful for us? Um, uh, how, how, how is that being accepted? Thank you, Peter. Uh, the first thing I will have to start with uh, how the humans have embraced what we are doing. One, the tree planting that we are engaging locally in the communities and in the forest is integrated community tree planting system, which involves fruit tree growing, which helps all households to have the real expectation that their children will have fruits in the next near future. They will feed on them because most of them have grown on fruits without even eating food lunch. They are full already, the stomachs are full and they have managed to go, but they have cut them down because of the, the agent gain, small and agent gain. So the wildlife from the inside the forests are coming out because they are looking for food. The fruits have been cut in the forest. The community have accepted to also support by participating in the planting trees within the forest where they cut the trees, the fruits for the wildlife. So that the effect of wildlife affecting, uh, inconveniencing their crops is given a mile, is given a, and a solution. And therefore the community is also now aggressively understanding the concept that we are bringing on board. As we restore the ecosystem, they are also having an addition on their land, the number of trees. And they now know that the trees can cause rainfall formation. So they are aware that to avoid the desertification of dr or drought outbreak, they must plant the trees so that they can have rainfall to grow their crops. Besides that, they know that areas where trees are, the soils are quite soft and very fertile. Because they have seen now some areas that has taken long without trees. It is always very hard area, hard soils are found. The area is always eroded. There has been erosion that has taken place. So it is very, very infertile. Next to you, almost not useful. So the effect of tree planting cause comes to their mind. And they really understand it as now a good concept. Those that we have already reached. And to those we have not yet reached, they will also pick the concept because 
in the same area, same challenges are affecting most of them. Thank you, Ronald. And with, maybe with the wildlife, one, for example, the birds, the animals, I will talk about the chimpanzees that always come and how they have managed it to exist. Those animals always like fruits and to play on trees. When they cut down the trees where they play from, they always come in the gardens and instead of playing with these small, small tree shrubs or something, so they jump on bananas and they end up eating bananas. But in areas where there are trees and there are bananas, they mostly do not affect the bananas. They will go and play on the trees, just jumping on here, here and there, and enjoying also the environment. They are very fascinating when you are there or when you are looking at them. That is how I can really answer Peter. Thank you, Ronald. Can, can you also say that the local leaders that you are working with, that they have become an advocate for what human nature is doing and that they also are spreading the word, word and educating their local community? Yes, Inji. I have to let you know that uh, we call them governors of the district now like the chairperson LOC5. Now the prime minister of the Republic of Uganda comes from the same district, Kapumiro, the prime minister, and has embraced, has accepted the ecosystem restoration activities to go on and on until Jesus comes back. And I have liked it because nature is nature. She knows that once we inconvenience nature, we are inconveniencing humans. She has already studied the concept of nature that we have given to her, that we have shared with her. And so now she is a good converted, born again, nature conservationist as a prime minister of Uganda. Beautiful. And maybe one thing I can add on uh, that Peter wanted to know, these people also in among these trees that we give them, they have expectations that after 20 years, they can be able to sell some of these trees because we tell them that minimum of 20 years, leave those trees to grow. Maybe you will have known the use that after 20 years, this tree has been here. It should be given more 20 years to make 40 years. So they have it in mind that at least minimum of 40 years, these trees must survive. They are helping them and they will help them and those who will be there. Thank you, Ronald. That's beautiful. Are there any other questions for Ronald? If so, you can raise your hand or... I do, I do have one more question, Ronald, and it's, it's uh, more about monitoring and evaluation. Um, and also Mick visited you and your site. And I'm curious, uh, how is monitoring and evaluation going? Is that still something that is really in development for your project or? It is one key area that we have as a challenge that we need uh, more hand. We need to develop a monitoring scheme the efforts to recognize what we have put in place about its growth and the development. And also the management is very key. 
there is a sound lack in the organization as young as we are, but more so. Our need to effect our work plan is very, very much important. Little by little makes us grow, makes us move. And that's why in our arrangements, we mobilize resources collectively. And still, it is my call that together we are stronger and we can achieve. Let us all join hands, support human nature, support camp human nature, support Uganda, and everyone support ecosystem restoration to continue to go ahead to have a wonderful future. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. I agree. I agree. Is there any any um, last question, or is this a beautiful um, ending that indeed we are building this movement together and we are stronger together, um, and that we are all an advocate for um, making this world a better place and supporting ecosystem restoration and sharing that with uh, with everyone we know that this is the great work of our time. Um, yeah. Is there any last question? Yeah, Ardy, go for it. Do you receive many European people helping out? Are there many European people coming to your place? Yes, they come, many. Mostly like Europeans. Okay. Yeah. Most like you, you uh, Michael, and yeah. Sorry. 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 Go ahead, Ernest. Yes, I, I said I would come by. Do you know the project in um, not far from you, 75 kilometers from you, the Uganda Development and Training Center in Kigali? Did you ever hear of it? Um, I have heard about them. Mm -hmm. Which is a wonderful and very inspiring project as well. And you might uh, oh. catch up with them because they have a very interesting... Well, that's where I met John, by, by the way. That's where I met John Liu. He went wow. to see that in 2020. And um, have a look. Because how to spread the message. Ronald, I, 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 I put you in touch with them, URDT, uh, through Alida. I, I yeah, don't know if you've been able to you meet know them. Them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've, uh, I've met them also. Yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting because um, oh. I think it's a very interesting base to have another camp, maybe even working together with you. But sure. that will be powerful. Mm. Yeah, most welcome. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ernest, for, for that tip. It's mm -hmm. always, indeed, we are stronger together, so it might be a powerful it's connection. Yummy. Yes, exactly. All right, any other last questions or, or tips? Otherwise, I really want to thank you for joining this session. It was, again, really love you, uh, lovely. And thank you so much, Ronald, for... Um, for your time and sharing your story with us. Um, yeah, it really um, struck us all. So thank you so much and all the work that you are doing. It's really incredible. And um, yeah, again, thank you everyone. And indeed we are advocates for ecosystem restoration ourselves. So um, like it, share it, Fund it is our campaign just to get the word out and get more people into this incredible movement. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, for joining. And I want to wish you a very lovely um, holiday season, wherever you are. I hope you will spend it in uh, 
health and with uh, your family and friends. All right. See you in the new year. <laughs> Wishing you everyone Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye to everyone. Thank you so much. God be with you all. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. I can see you. Thanks, Ariel. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you, everyone. Wow. That's been so powerful. <laughs> Thank well, you, Judy. Thank you. Wow. Great. Great. Thank you.